Hey everybody, John Craig here with Performance Plus Tennis. I've got Kenzie with me today and uh, just got back from the BNB Paribas Open and thought I'd give you uh, an update on that and also a little bit of um, perspective on my end. What a great event it is. You know, they call uh, the BNB Paribas Open Indian Wells Tennis Paradise and it truly is. You know, I go almost every year, but um, Every year I'm just astonished at the beauty of this facility and the property and the mountains and it's just gorgeous. I mean, it's amazing to be in the desert, 80 degrees, looking at snow on the mountains and watching the greatest players in the world. It's such an exciting uh, event and they do everything there beautifully. The venue is amazing. The food is great. The vibe is great. They, they think of everything to make it a truly exceptional experience for the fans. Um, the biggest challenge is is that it's very crowded and uh, you know tennis is definitely growing in popularity and you can see that just by going there every year it's more and more crowded there's more excitement um, so if you're going to go plan ahead get there early and you can make a great day of it but if you get there late um, it's going to be difficult to really enjoy it because it is getting very very crowded but uh, what a great time i had a um, couple things matches that I, i'm going to talk about a little bit the first one that comes to mind is um, Andy Murray versus Andre Rublev. It was on Friday afternoon. I did watch that match in its entirety, and I was very curious to see, you know, how Andy would would perform against Andre. Um, similar game styles, really, for the most part. Um, but obviously, Andre is quite a bit younger than than Andy at this point in time. But it was a very good match. Andy played very competitively in the first set. Uh, in fact, he had four set points, three of them in the row, when, when Andre was serving at 4-5, love 40. And, and Andy just played one of those semi-casual points, that first point, almost like he was taking it for granted. And we have all done that, right? We've missed that. We should just finish the, the, the game off right there. When we're up love 40 or we're up 40 love, and we get a little casual, we, make, we kind of just take it, we kind of soften up a little bit, miss that first point, give a little hope to the opponent. That's exactly what happened. He just didn't finish that first point. He should have just finished it. But Andre won that point on a mistake that Andy made. He cracked a couple of forehands, got it back to Deuce, uh, back and forth. Andy did have another set point, which he didn't win. Ultimately, he went down in the tiebreaker, um, and he only won more, one more game after that. In fact, at the end of the tiebreaker, Andy was walking to the net, and I almost thought it looked like he was going to call the match. But he did go ahead and play the second set, um, winning only one more game. And, you know, I'm, he's a fighter and he's a great player. Um, but it's clear to me that he has definitely lost a step. He's not as fluid as he used to be. He cannot match Andre's power, especially on the forehand. Um, and he's, you know, he's just, hey, he's had a great career, right? Three Grand Slam titles, Olympic gold medals, Davis Cup. Wow. Amazing, right? But uh, as he has said, I think this is going to be his last year on tour and he's going to finish up the summer. Um, hats off to Andy as a fellow Scotsman. He's, I've always been a fan um, and wish him all the very, very best. Other matches of note, uh, you know, Rena Sabalenka, uh, you know that if you've been watching the channel here, I interviewed her coach, uh, her technical coach, Gavin McMillan, a few weeks back. Uh, check that out if you haven't seen it. But uh, she had a big struggle yesterday. Uh, throwing down, I think it was uh, 10 double faults, or was it nine double faults? But she offset that with aces. Um, uh, but if she's going to um, you know, get through this tournament and get deeper in the rounds, she's going to have to clean up that serve and get those double faults out. That's really, really important. But I also think it was important that she was able to fight back and win this match. And that will be a big confidence boost for her going forward. Um, also saw a lot of players at the practice courts. You know, the practice courts at the BNB Paribas Open are fun, really fun, and one of the more popular places to actually be at the event. And I got to see Coco Goff working on her serve, and uh, I'm going to be doing a video review on her serve here this week, and I see a couple of technical things that she needs to fix to really improve her serving consistency. Uh, and you'll see it when I show it to you, what's going on with her serve. Um, she can she can really improve her serve a lot, and and not only just the performance and the power of the spin and the placements, but also the consistency overall with her serve. So check that out. Also saw Novak Djokovic practicing, and uh, Novak was practicing serving and volleying a lot, and I. 
think, you know, his goal is to try to shorten points as he's moving into the season here and playing a lot of matches. Uh, it's very important that he, he really uh, tries to shorten the points up and, and really preserve his energy for these, these tournaments. Um, so we'll see how he does, see if he serves in volleys more. It's difficult to do on these courts, though, because I also noted how slow the courts are, and they've definitely slowed the courts down. They're also using pen balls, which are fluffing up very quickly, all with the intent of slowing things down, because in the desert, the air is very dry and thin, so the ball travels through pretty quickly. And so they're trying to make sure that the courts are slow enough to match the conditions. And speaking of conditions, it's amazing how the conditions change there, because on Friday, it was 80 degrees at 2 o'clock. But at 6 o'clock, once the sun went down, it was pushing 65. And then in the evening matches, it was probably getting into the low 60s for sure uh, by the time they were playing evening matches. So, you know, some of the things we don't think about is, is how the conditions change so dramatically. You could play a, a daytime match, you know, today in 80 degrees, and you could play a nighttime match tomorrow in 60 degrees, and the conditions are way different. So lots of challenges. When, when the players are out there playing in these in these tournaments. And everything changes from event to event, too. So um, overall, though, what a, what an extraordinary tournament, what an extraordinary experience. It'll be fun to watch how the next week uh, unfolds. Lots of tennis yet to be played, of course. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Emma Raducanu does in her next match, which is against Arena Sabalenka. See if she can make some inroads and get herself back into the rankings and... Um, not be a wild card for these types of events. That would be really good for tennis if she could make an impact again. Uh, on the men's side, obviously, we've got Alcaraz, who's coming back, and he's going to try to achieve his first victory since Wimbledon last year. He's looking pretty sharp. Uh, I did watch him practicing as well. He looks really good. Um, saw some other players playing. So Gail Mafis, who had a really good win yesterday, watched him practicing uh, on Friday. He's got a great serve, and I'm going to review his serve as well uh, here probably in the next week or so. Some of the key things that we can do to improve our serves as well, that really looking at his serve, very, very efficient. And he's so entertaining, so much fun to watch. So um, I think real quick, who else I saw out there that was uh, practicing and playing? But um, overall, oh, I saw Ben Shelton play. And Ben Shelton uh, won in three sets, started out a little bit slow against a wild card in the first set, but uh, came back and right of the ship and won that match in, in uh, good style. He's looking pretty good. Good to see that Sebastian Corda is playing well. I'm really a big fan of his game. He's super smooth. I thought last year when he got to, I think it was the quarters of the Australian Open, he had encountered that wrist injury and he said he had a tough year in 03 after, or 23 after the Australian Open. But, um, and Sebastian Corda, he's another player that I really like. He's super smooth. Very efficient, moves about the court very well. Had a great run at the Australian Open 2023. Then he encountered that wrist injury, I think, late in the tournament and had a really rough 2023 after that. But it looks like he's coming back into good form. I'd love to see him do well. Um, of course, Taylor Fritz is still in the tournament. Uh, Tommy Paul had a good win uh, yesterday as well. Um, so lots of good Americans still in there as well, which is exciting. Um so let's see how the rest of the week unfolds. And lots of good things coming up here at Performance Plus Tennis. For those of you who enjoyed my interview with Gavin McMillan, who is Arena Sabalenka's techniques coach, I've got another little mini series of interviews coming up with a very famous coach from the 1980s um, here in Southern California. He was probably the most decorated coach in the early 80s and really developed a lot of great juniors. So that's going to be very fun and very interesting. So stay tuned for that. Lots more coming here at Performance Plus Tennis. Stay tuned. Leave your comments down below. Uh, let me know if there's something that you would like me to um, review or talk about um, here on the channel. I'd be glad to do it. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.